Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So the Sega Dreamcast and the Nintendo GameCube. Now, believe it or not, these two game consoles have a lot in common. I mean, just think about it. You know, the Dreamcast was Sega's last console and the GameCube was Nintendo's worst selling console. These two consoles were kind of the black sheep to every other console in that company. But either way, what we're going to do here today is just compare and contrast the two systems. See what brings them together and see what separates them. But before we do that, we're going to go into the history of these two systems, see where it all kind of started. But either way, enough bullshit. Let's just get started with the Sega Dreamcast. This is the day you have trained for. The day you have studied for. Utilize your superior skills. Your superior intelligence. Sit down, Rodin! Sarah, baby! Oh, you were one fly! Don't make me hurt you. Learn to defeat your ruthless enemy, Steve of Hackensack. Ryan, you're gonna get rooted. Shut up, quadruped. The Sega Dreamcast, released on 9999 and it was ahead of its time. That, that was cringe. Now what we're gonna do today is to see how Sega came from the dumpster fire that was the Sega Saturn to the graceful Dreamcast. Sega started developing the Dreamcast around 1996 or so, and the development for the Sega Dreamcast was kinda of weird, it was, it was being developed by Sega America and Sega Japan kind of separately. Now to give that a little bit of context, Sega Japan wanted to use the same technology on the Sega Saturn except on the Dreamcast and Sega America wanted to work with 3DFX. Now as you may tell, that might have been a bit of a competition. However, when 3DFX went public with what they were going to do with Sega, obviously that didn't work out and that's why we have the uh, Hitachi chip on the Sega Dreamcast. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Now one more thing that I would like to add about the Dreamcast development was when 3DFX went public, EA kind of cut one of this and sort of cut themselves off from the Dreamcast. Now, I mention this because during the Sega Genesis and even the Sega Saturn era, EA heavily supported Sega. Then, of course, when the Dreamcast came out, there was the 2K series. This was a big disadvantage when the Sega Dreamcast came out. I mean, I know it doesn't matter today, but of course, you know, back then they sort of had to appeal to everybody. And of course, back then, EA Sports games were, you know, the best. So to have no FIFA, no Madden on the Sega Dreamcast was a big disadvantage. Advantage. But that's mostly the development of the Sega Dreamcast. Now, my apologies if I got anything wrong, but that's enough of the development side. Now, of course, as we all know, when the Dreamcast released, it didn't have a long life cycle. Of course, it released on, you know, September 9th, 1999, and it lasted up until March 2001, which honestly isn't a lot. While it did have a short life cycle, it did have a bunch of great games, and I'm not gonna go too deep on this. There's a lot of things that kind of held the Dreamcast back, but one thing that I'd like to mention is just the amount of great games released on the Dreamcast that wouldn't be made today. Like, Sega really went balls out on the system. I mean, Jet Set Radio, Summer Day Amigo, House of the Dead, Crazy Taxi, Ill Bleed, all of these games with original concepts. At this point, Sega was just kind of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And well, yes, from a business perspective today, it doesn't look good, but think about how hectic it must have been back then. You know, just Sega going all out with one console, then, then sort of cooking out the Nintendo. I couldn't imagine how it was back then, but hey, you know, Sega Dreamcast has a very long legacy, you know, it's one of the first consoles I've ever played, so of course I'm sort of nostalgia bound to it. But even though the Sega Dreamcast didn't last long, at least the Dreamcast still has a very strong following today, whether that's for the bad or for the good. But hey, let's move on to the Nintendo GameCube. <laughs> The Nintendo GameCube, a very underrated console in my opinion. Now, information when it comes up to the GameCube development can be kind of sparse here and there. So I'll just state what I know and take it from there. Development for the GameCube started back in 1997. Obviously, Nintendo wants to get a head start compared to Sega and Sony and of course the soon-to-be Xbox at the time. Now, believe it or not, it was actually Nintendo's intention to launch the GameCube in 1999, which wouldn't have been a good idea, but thankfully it was actually delayed. GameCube was actually announced during E3 1999, and although it was really said it was, it's not going to use cartridges like the N64, but of course the chairman at Nintendo at the time didn't tell the public what the GameCube was going to run on. Now I'll be honest, that's really all I know on the development side, but there is a few more things that I want to mention. Number one, first party publishers, it didn't really go too well. Back in 1999 and 2000 when GameCube games were being made, 
third party publishers didn't really get a, uh, a GameCube dev kit, which, at least in my opinion, severely damaged the GameCube at least at launch. And yeah, that's really all I know. But of course, the GameCube launched in November 2001 in North America and it sold over 500,000 units during its first week. It's honestly not too bad, but of course, compared to the PS2 and the OG Xbox, it didn't do so hot. But outside of the financial stuff, I feel like Nintendo did a really good job with this console, of course, when it comes to the first party games and different things like that. I mean, there's just a ton of legendary games on the GameCube. I mean, you have the Capcom 5, Animal Crossing, uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, Metroid Prime, Star Fox Adventure, Sonic Adventure 1, 2, and Heroes, and of course, Shadow the Hedgehog, a bunch of great games. And even though third party publishers kind of got ripped off when it comes to the GameCube, you gotta admit, the GameCube has a ton of great first party games. But of course, on the business end, that's, that may not be sustainable. But either way, that's the GameCube. Let's move on and uh, I guess compare and contrast. So if it's one thing that I've said before, it's that these two consoles have a lot in common. Now the obvious one is both of these came out when both Sega and Nintendo were at a very low point. And as I said earlier, when it came to the Sega Dreamcast, Sega at that time, Sega just kind of threw shit at the wall and see and see what kind of stuck. And I would say that's kind of the same way with Nintendo. I mean, look at Animal Crossing, look at Mario Kart, look at Metroid, look at Mario Sunshine, all of these stray from the typical Nintendo formula. I mean, hell, the Nintendo GameCube didn't get a Mario game at launch, it actually got Luigi. What I'm saying is, the GameCube sticks out like a sore thumb compared to the other GameCube lineup. Like, you know, the NES got Mario, the SNES got Mario World, and 64 got Mario 64, so on and so on, but then the GameCube gets Luigi's Mansion. And let's not forget to mention the technical side, the GameCube is as powerful as the OG Xbox, except it has a lot less junk in the trunk. And hell, you could even run a GameCube online, all you would need is the uh, broadband adapter, or, or whatever it's called. And let's bring it back to the Dreamcast, it's sort of the same thing. It strayed away from the typical Sega formula. But I would say it does that more so out of desperation compared to anything else. Because of course, you know, it was Sega's last console, they, they, they threw everything at the wall. The point that I'm getting at is, both of these consoles came out at a very desperate time for both companies. And both companies threw a bunch of shit at the wall to see what stuck. And with that came a bunch of creativity. I mean, just like the games. I would say a good majority of the GameCube library and the Dreamcast library wouldn't be made today. They had to be really creative back then. They had to really think out of the box to stick around. What I'm saying is these are both two high quality consoles with a bunch of great games with a high value library. But now let's take a look at what really separates them. Well, let's just take a look at the game libraries. I mean, first off for the GameCube, Nintendo stuck with their usual titles, but the Dreamcast really went out of bounds with that. A ton of really creative IPs came out of the Dreamcast, like Shenmue, Samba Amigo, Crazy Taxi. You know, you didn't see your average Sega titles on there. However, on the GameCube, you have your typical stuff. You know, you have your Mario Kart, you have your Zelda, you have your Mario. But to give GameCube a little bit of credit, each one of those games have a original concept compared to other games in that library. And to focus on the GameCube for a second, I feel like Nintendo was much more willing to be creative back then. Like, let's just pretend that Animal Crossing didn't exist. Let's just pretend that somebody came up with Animal Crossing today. I don't think Nintendo would put that out on Switch. Or let's just say modern Nintendo wanted to make a Mario Kart, it wouldn't be a Mario Kart Double Dash. It would be essentially what we have now, which is DLC. What I'm saying is Nintendo was definitely willing to be a lot more riskier back then. And with their main titles too. Like the Mario Kart, the Metroid, Zelda, Luigi, that's Nintendo's main bread and butter. And the fact that they went so out of bounds with it back then is just interesting. I mean, look at Zelda. A lot of people expected, you know, a serious hardcore Zelda, but they got Wind Waker, which honestly isn't too bad. I think you all get what I'm saying by now. Ladies and gents, I think that'll be it. If you want to, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to do in Russia, and uh, tell me down below. What do you prefer, GameCube or Dreamcast? Tell me down in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>